Throughout the late 1930s and 1940s, the German army swept its way across Europe, leaving, well, draconian sights in its wake. It served with approximately 13.6 million men throughout the war, and its structure was undoubtedly quite complex. Well, dear viewer, that's exactly what we're going to be discussing today. Now, without further ado, let us commence forth. <laughs> The new army was reformed from the former peacetime army, made mostly of restricted conscripts up to 100,000 men as limited by the Treaty of Versailles. Thus, the need for reform to expand across Europe was vital to the German war plan. Concisely, the German tactic was to speedily respond to changing circumstances within a campaign, either defensive or offensive, rather than coordinating and ordering constant troop movements. This can be coined as the term Blitzkrieg, as coined by the British, although the German name for the tactic would actually be Bewungungskrieg. The German army focused on achieving high combat performance rather than high organisational efficiency. They were awarded combat effectiveness and thus NCOs and officers were selected for their ability to command in combat rather than anything else. This would allow the army to achieve high performance on the battlefield, better in combat than both the British and the United States army. The German army was mainly structured into army groups or Heeresgruppen, consisting of several armies that were relocated, restructured or renamed during the course of the war. Forces of allied states such as Croatia, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, etc. as well as units made up of non-Germans were assigned to German units. As an example of this, for Operation Barbarossa, the army forces were assigned to three strategic campaign groupings. Army Group North, with Leningrad as its objective, Army Group Centre with Smolensk as its objective, and Army Group South with Kiev as its objective. Below the Army Group came forces including Field Armies, or Panzer Groups, which later became Army Level Formations themselves. Then there were also Corps and Divisions. The Army used Kampfgruppe, which roughly translates to a battle group in English. These combat groupings ranged from Corps sizes to detachment camps to command composed of companies or even platoons. One point I will bring up that the term Wehrmacht does not mean the German army, it means combined defence force that also included the Kriegsmarine or the Navy and the Luftwaffe or the Air Force. <laughs> General officers of the German army were fairly recognisable by the uniform that had a distinct lack of Waffen Farbe or branch of service colours, a 40mm double red stripe down each trouser leg, and a Hochrock lapel badge on the collar of a great coat and their normal service blazer. The peaked cap, or the Schirmutz, was finalised in 1934. Its insignia consisted of a national cockade surrounded by an oak leaf on the front of the band, with the Wehrmacht Sadler above. These were stamped with aluminum and there was a bullion which was coloured silver for field and company grade officers and gold for general officers. The rank of General Feldmarschall or General Field Marshal was the highest attainable rank bestowed by the Fuhrer Adolf Hitler. Unlike its predecessor within the Austro-Hungarian and German empires, the rank was bestowed onto 20 of Hitler's best field commanders, which happened to include Keitel von Rundstedt, Rommel von Manstein and von Paulus. The rank's role would be to command an army group dictated by the Oberkommando des Heeres. Above that would be the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht or the Supreme Commander position held by Hitler. Its insignia would consist of a golded braided epaulet with a double marshal's baton crossed on top of it. The General Oberst, or Colonel General, was the most senior of the general titles that an officer could hold. Its position was above a full general but below a field marshal, with its command either being over positions such as the Chief of General Staff, an army group, or a field army. Notably, the title may also carry the prefix General Oberst im dem Range eines General Feldmarschall, which translates to Colonel General acting within the capacity of a General Field Marshal. Its insignia consisted of three pips over a braided gold epaulet. The General der Waffengattung, or the General of Branch of Service, was the equivalent of a full general within the German army. Its position and title would change depending on the branch of service it conducted itself in, examples being the General der Panzertruppe, General of Panzer Troops, General der Nachrichtentruppe, or the General of Signal Troops, or the General der Infanterie, or the General of Infantry, the General Oberstabsatz, or the medical general, etc., etc. Consistently, its insignia was made up of two pips over a braided gold epaulet. However, its color Hochrot insignia may change depending on the branch of service. 
Blue for Administrative General, Black for Judicial General, etc. etc. Notable holders include von Ludwitz, Lieb and Dössler. The General Lieutenant, or the Lieutenant General, was the second lowest rank that a general officer could hold within the German army. Its capacity for field commanding would contain, but not limited to, either a corps or a division. This would approximately command between 60,000 and 20,000 men, though it could be higher or lower depending on the branch of service. Its insignia held a singular pip over a braided gold epaulet, and its notable holders include Friedrich Fuchs and Karl Maus. The General Major, or the Major General, was the lowest rank that a general officer could hold within the German army. Its capacity for field commanding would contain but not be limited to either a division or a brigade command. This would approximately command between 20,000 and 5,000 men. Its insignia held a blank braid gold epaulet. Notable holders include Karl Arning and Hamper. The Oberst, or Colonel, though as a matter of fact the word literally translates to superior or uppermost, regimental command was the most common of the field command role for this rank, though the name implies it may actually hold the staff office, thus giving the rank commander command of around a thousand men. The rank insignia consisted of two golden pips over a braided silver shoulder board. Notable holders include Klaus von Stauffenberg. The rank of Oberst Lautenant, or in English, Lieutenant Colonel, regimental or battalion command was its most common field command role, and it also may hold a staff office, thus giving the rank command of around 400 to 1,000 men. The rank insignia consisted of a similar insignia, but with only one golden pip. The rank of Major was the lowest of the staff officer ranks, usually a battalion commander was the most common field commanding role for the rank and it had command of around 400 to 600 men. The rank insignia consisted of a blank braided silver shoulder board. The rank of Hauptmann, or Captain in English, was the highest of the company grade officers. Though this title may change to Rittmeister if the cavalry officer held the title. The rank would often command a company of around 100 to 250 soldiers, depending on the branch of soldiers. The rank insignia consisted of two golden pips over a Russian braided silver shoulder board lined with the Waffenfarbe of the officer. The rank of Oberleutnant, or Senior Lieutenant in English, was the middle of the company grade officers. The rank would most often command a platoon of around 50 soldiers, depending on the branch of soldiers again, and the rank insignia would consist of the same rank insignia, but with only a singular golden pip. The Leutnant, or Lieutenant in English, was the middle of the company grade officers. The rank would most often command a platoon of around 50 soldiers, depending on the branch of soldiers, and the rank insignia consisted of a blank Russian braided silver shoulder tab lined with the Waffenfarbe. The NCO of the German Army's uniform would change almost every year throughout the war, with the original M1936 uniform being far more grey than the greener 1945 uniform. Moreover, the breast eagle would also change depending on the campaign, the colour of service, and later in the war it would tend to adopt a far less detailed, far more greener version of its 1939 counterpart. Moreover, compared to the Weimar era uniforms, the skirt of the Feldblouse, or the blazer, was shorter and the tailoring was far more form fitted due to Germany's adoption of mechanised warfare, soldiers now spent much of their time in confined spaces and so it helped to stop them getting dirty. Within the blazes there were also hooks which allowed the soldier to attach well their equipment belt to it and allowed them to spread the weight of the equipment. The M36 was produced and used till the end of the war. The Stahlhelm was also widely adopted as well as the March Stifle or the marching boots, though in campaigns such as Africa the Schnur Schuhe or the lace-up shoes were far more preferred for both officers and soldiers. Officially, the highest position that an NCO could hold within the German army was the Hauptfeldweber, which in turn was the administrative NCO of a company and the commander's logistical assistant. He was roughly, therefore, similar to a company sergeant major or a first sergeant, though his duties did not usually involve combat leadership. The Stabsfeldwebel, or Staff Field Usher in English, was comparable to a sergeant major. Its position would usually assist the officer of a company in their daily affairs and in command. The rank was restricted to career volunteers automatically after 12 years of service, the rank was created in 1938. The Oberfeldwebel, or Senior Field Usher, was comparable to a Master Sergeant or First Sergeant, and its position would usually be similar to that of the title before, in that it was assisting an officer of a company in their daily affairs and in command, and wouldn't often be placed in a fighting role, although it could be depending on the branch of service. 
The rank of Feldwebel, or Field Usher, was typically a senior or technical sergeant, would hold command normally over a group or squad of soldiers roughly from 4 to 14 men, though numbers could vary. The Unterfeldwebel, or Junior's Field Usher, or Sergeant, would be originally called Sergeant in 1921, and then it was renamed, and it was an automatic promotion after six years of service and three years as an Unteroffizier, if not yet advanced to the rank of Feldwebel, or Wachtmeister and it could also command a squad of soldiers roughly from 4 to 10 men, although this, this could change. The Unteroffizier, or the Under Officer, was also a sergeant that was more comparable to a junior sergeant rather than a full-on sergeant, and it held the same command of roughly 4 to 10 to maybe 14 men at max. The rank of Stabsgefreite, or Administrative Corporal, was the highest official rank that a listed man could hold after 1942. Stabsgefreites were often used as group leaders or Gruppenführers due to the lack of Unteroffizier or NCOs. Promotion to this rank was suspended in 1934, although existing Stabsgefreites retained it, and the promotion resumed in 1942. Obege Freta, or Senior Corporal, was the second highest enlisted rank, and it held a similar command as the Stabsgefreite later in the war. The Gefreiter was historically, in the German armies, an experienced soldier who by true virtue of seniority was exempt from more menial duties and it could be translated as corporal. Obea Soldat was as previously mentioned that was a rank with more of an empty title rather than a position of command and it was an automatic promotion after 12 months, later 6 months if they hadn't yet advanced to Gefreiter. Soldat was the lowest rank within the German army, and its title may change depending on the branch of service the soldier served within. As a pioneer for engineering, Sanitet Soldat for medical corps, or a Jäger for the hunter or Alpine corps, etc. etc. With this, we have reached the last rank in the German army of the Second World War. Well, dear viewer, I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it, as long as it took to make. I thought I would include some new effects, such as the in person camera with in uniform. But uh, let me know what you think, if you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, I just want your honest opinion. Thank you, and to you, dear viewer, Alfie Dezane. Rockwood Land.